Now that I've actually switched the camera on, let's restart. Hello everybody and welcome to the Creative Flare podcast. My name is James Carter and today we're going to be talking about the role that classical art has in this contemporary art world that we live in. But before we jump into any of that, I would very quickly like to thank everybody for the amount of support that I've received recently and for everybody who follows me on social media. And on Instagram, we've just surpassed a thousand followers, which is just absolutely amazing to me. And the Creative Flare platform is doing fantastically well as well. And I think the last time I mentioned about this, we had about 300 users, 376 users, I believe. And within the first month, so it's been one month since that platform launched, we're now on somewhere like 10,000 within a month, which is just absolutely mind blowing to me. And the platform works so much better than I thought it would ever be. And it's just, it's just everything amazing is to, it's just all fantastic for this. Very quickly, I would like to mention, we will not be commenting on the shirt for today. It's a very warm day here in the UK and it was a very comfortable shirt and it's just, yes, it's my summery shirt. I quite like it. And it, it's very creative flary. So I thought it works quite well. But yes, to reach a thousand followers on Instagram to a lot of people may not seem like the biggest achievement in the world. But to me, I'm fine with like 10 people or one person who enjoys my content. I'm not so much about the numbers for it. It's just I enjoy doing this. And the, the few people that really, really enjoy what I do and really enjoy the content that I put out really make this entirely worthwhile for me to be doing. So thank you to every single person who follows me and supports me. And it's just amazing. So thank you for that. I can't really lean back on this sofa. I can change to here, but then the microphone doesn't quite line up for me. I really, really need a new microphone. This one is just shoddy and old and rickety and it picks up all the audio and nothing just seems to work with it, right? Let's see if I can adjust my... There we go. How does that work? I can see... I can't see what you guys are seeing for this. For me, all I can see are just little spiky bars for the audio and what that's picking up. Okay, so for today's topic, I want to be talking to you about the role that classical art has in today's current world of contemporary art and very conceptual art pieces. This is very much related to do with the theory of art and not so much the practical side of art. I personally find the theory of art very, very interesting to study and the history of art is so fascinating to me. And there's a lot of people that aren't so interested in this side of the art world. To me, I enjoy both sides an awful lot and I'm very active in both sides of the art world as well. Classical art is something that I've always really been interested in and I've always really enjoyed the study of it, the creation of it, and just generally learning about it and looking at it and watching people create it. But in today's contemporary art world, it doesn't really seem to have a place or fit in anywhere too well. Now, as with anything within art, everything is up for interpretation and please feel free to have your own insights and your own voice into this. This is just my personal voice explaining my thoughts around this topic and what some of the issues may be around it. When we think about classical art, what is it that we really think of? Is it a Monet painting, a Van Gogh painting, or would it be someone like Raphael or Michelangelo? Michelangelo is more of a sculpture though. Da Vinci, let's go with Da Vinci. Would you consider all of that very classical art? And yet, when we think of contemporary artworks, what we often think about is this idea of very conceptual art pieces and artworks that make no sense. And quite often people will get confused with modern artworks and contemporary artworks and conceptual artworks, which is a, it's completely fine to make that mistake and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But as to, but to clarify with it, modern art is not contemporary art. Contemporary art is not an art style or necessarily an art movement. Contemporary art is any artwork that has been made post World War II. Conceptual art is a very big art movement currently where the idea of your artwork is more important than the actual execution of the artwork itself. Now, these do often take quite heavily 
from inspiration from classical art. And so I do strongly believe that classical artworks do still have a place in today's world. Today, there are an awful lot of artists that still do classical paintings and classical artworks. And when I'm talking about classical artworks, I'm talking about traditional paintings. Maybe it could be a traditional oil painting or an acrylic painting. But it's a, it's a certain painting style and a way of painting and a way of appreciating the artwork that is being produced. When you look at an artwork and you appreciate the art for its technical ability, not so much for the idea of the artwork, which is quite often confused as realistic artworks or photorealistic artworks where apparently you have to create an artwork that is almost unidentifiable as a painting or as an artwork itself or a drawing. And that is very much realistic artworks and realism. But classical art is not realism. Classical art is the movement in which we create works in which we appreciate the technical ability over the idea of the artwork itself. I already said that, didn't I? I think I did. But there is a certain level of appreciating the symbolism within the artworks and appreciating what is going on within the paintings and artworks themselves. This can quite often be seen within Rembrandt's paintings. So Rembrandt was very much a classical artist and created very inspirational works. But a lot of his paintings and a lot of his artworks were self-portraits or portraits. He didn't necessarily do an awful lot of landscapes or he's not so well known for those artworks. Primarily, he's known for his self-portraits and he created just so many self-portraits. It's amazing. But his paintings for those are considered classical artworks. And when we create classical artworks in today's world, we are quite heavily judged for it as people do not necessarily appreciate the technical skill or technical format that has gone into the creation of this work. <clears throat> Instead, we look at the idea that has gone into the artwork and the idea that is being presented to us, which could be anything is art. And this idea really started to come around when Marcel Duchamp created Fountain, which is basically called a ready-made artwork where he took an object that is already being made in this circumstance a urinal he took that and then wrote uh, r.mutt 1917 written onto the side of it and displayed it as art i don't know why i did the air quotations if you're just listening to this on audio i did air quotations <laughs> i don't understand why because it is art and you can look at anything as being art. And yes, there is a certain way of looking at it. And th there is also another way of just seeing art as being anything, but then also seeing anything as art. You can really go around in circles and really just make your brain implode thinking about it. But when people talk about art or when you tell somebody that you're an artist, what do they often think about Quite often they will think about you creating or painting a portrait or basically just painting or drawing something and they go, oh, that's nice, you're an artist, thinking that you paint or draw stuff. <laughs> stuff, I put emphasis on the stuff because you draw and you paint stuff. Whereas in reality, you could be a conceptual artist who creates works of art that create deep meaning and have this idea that's formulated around an object or around the idea itself. And that's more around to do with like the outcome of the physical artwork itself doesn't have as much power as the idea to do with the artwork itself, if that makes sense. You wouldn't know it. You wouldn't believe me if I told you, but I do actually study this sort of thing. It's just an incredibly hard thing to put across to people and try and explain to people and individuals, which is very much a reason why I started Creative Flair, which is to help people understand art and get, like sort of enable people to learn more from art and from other people as well. And everybody has their own voice. Everybody has their own ideas and their own way of viewing artworks. And you should be completely open to listening to what everybody perceives art as being. I do, however, struggle with the idea 
of when some people claim that classical art has no place in today's contemporary art world. This idea is completely ludicrous to me, I will admit, as I have been a massive classical art lover for just about forever, really. One of my favourite artists is Vermeer, who was a 17th century Dutch artist. And if you're involved in the art world, it's most likely that you would have heard of Vermeer. And Vermeer was definitely an inspirational artist for me. And when I first started painting and drawing, Vermeer was always an inspiration at the pinnacle of classical art for what I wanted to be able to achieve. And when you look at some of his paintings and you look at some of his artworks, more in depth than just a casual observing it, I mean really look, the level of detail and technical ability that is put into his paintings is absolutely astounding. You can find yourself getting lost in one of his paintings. You could find yourself staring into the soul of one of these paintings. He didn't produce many, but the ones that he did produce and the ones that he did create really managed to capture people's attention due primarily to their technical ability. Not so much to the subjects that he would capture or the ideas that are being put across within the paintings, but it is very much the technical ability. And he has been claimed as being the master of light. I'm not going to go into the whole controversy over the camera obscura. To me, if he used it, it was just a tool. If not, cool, fantastic, absolute master. Everybody has their own thought. Everybody has their own idea on it. But when we take Vermeer's artworks, for example, he created those artworks for people. Artworks are created for people, and they are created for an individual or a group of people as to be presented in front of them and presented in front of an audience. And an artwork is activated when it is viewed by people and what that viewer is meant to perceive from that painting. Vermeer's paintings, being some of the pinnacle of classical art, were painted for more than just an audience. They were painted for an individual, or individuals to be able to view these paintings and view these artworks. It is thought that he accepted quite a few commissions, and so those artworks and paintings that he created were done for people to really look at and appreciate his technical ability. Whereas today, within conceptual artworks, these artworks are not so meant to be viewed by an individual, but are more often meant to be perceived by a mass audience. These conceptual and contemporary artworks have been put on display in museums around the world that are designed for us to look at and give us this idea and this insight into what the artist is trying to put across. We are not so interested in the technical ability of the artwork that has been produced when we observe artworks like this. We are meant to be perceiving these creations of art as ideas and to challenge social norms. And I do find it very, very interesting. There is a very big thing around when people say, oh, you enjoy classical art. You must not like contemporary or conceptual artworks then. And I think that's complete bollocks, to be honest, because I do enjoy both of them. I personally started as a realistic artist and I learned how to paint and draw realistic artworks. But one of the largest projects that I've done was designed as a conceptual art piece. But I mixed in classical artworks with it. I created four oil paintings that depicted landscapes. And from those oil paintings, I put them into a shredder. And then the remains of those oil paintings were put into epoxy resin and mounted into a tree stump. That is contemporary. That is conceptual. That finished piece of artwork is displaying the idea of the environment and displaying the idea of climate change. On top of that, I also wrote a book and got published in the news and did a whole bunch of other stuff and got the artwork sold as original NFTs at auction and all other stuff. But the idea itself within that was inspired by 
conceptual art and from classical art. So I do appreciate both of them. And as an art student and somebody who loves pretty much everything to do with art, I genuinely love everything in the art world, from photography to textiles to graphics. The whole art shebang and art umbrella is something I'm fascinated with. And when I say fascinated, I mean staying up till like three in the morning, learning about some random thing to do with art, going down a rabbit hole as to why the color red was so impactful and within paintings. And that's just, it to me, it's just the most amazing thing to be able to study and to be able to learn about. And there's a lot of people that, that, that aren't like me with that. And that's completely fine. But I, but back to the original thing of I like both sides of the artworks and both sides of the art world. I recently went down to London recently, actually, uh, with two of my friends. And while we were there, we were looking at universities and stuff and whatever. But we decided to go to the Tate Britain, the Tate Modern and the National Gallery. One of my friends really, really enjoys contemporary and conceptual artworks. She does not enjoy classical art to any nth degree whatsoever. <laughs> we, we walked around the National Gallery and to me, I was amazed. I felt like I was dreaming looking at some of these artworks and we got to see some of the most famous artworks in history and some of the most amazing paintings that were all classical. And they're all artworks that you look at and appreciate for their technical ability. And I was just in absolute awe with it. And I could wander around there for hours. And my friend, she went and sat down on one of the chairs and she was basically done with looking around within like five minutes. She was good. She was done. That was it. And me and my other friend, who we both enjoy classical artworks a lot more than she does, um, we would walk around the, the rest of the gallery and we enjoyed it and we absorbed it all in and we loved it. And that's, we, we, we appreciate that sort of artwork, but it's fine to not enjoy it as well. We did go to the Tate Modern and the Tate Britain as well, and both of them really enjoyed that as well, and I enjoyed it as well. And when you see this comparison of classical art and conceptual art and just contemporary artworks being displayed is amazing to observe how far we've come within art. But you can see the impact and the inspiration in contemporary art that has been taken from classical art. And so me and my two friends wandering around the Tate and the National Gallery was just, it was, it was quite funny, actually. Um, I sort of, the, the one who really enjoys conceptual art and only really likes conceptual art just wandered around the whole thing. And she just, she did it within like what? She, she wandered the first floor, the second floor, the third floor, then redid them again. And then sort of, we lost her. But me and my other friend, we, we wandered around a little slower, you know, absorbed it all in, you know, and we were good. And when she and I wanted to go and look at another bit or another artwork, we'd just go and look at it, you know, but we, we appreciate the classical artworks as well. And that's where we had no problem with our other friend just going off and exploring all the artworks she wanted to explore because me and her were just fine looking at these works trying to understand them, trying to appreciate them. But because we have more of a classical mindset, not more of a classical mindset, because we have an equal mindset for the appreciation of classical artwork, we would look at the art and really try to understand it. Because there's one, bar, there's one bit that just didn't quite make sense to me. In the Tate Modern, there is an artwork behind a display case of a potato plugged into one of the electricity things and I did not understand it I did not get it I was very confused and I sort of looked at it for a little but for a little while 
Whereas the friend who really enjoys contemporary artwork and conceptual artwork, she looked at it and went, wow. Whereas my other friend and I, we both looked at it and just went, okay. <laughs> but some of the other artworks that we saw, there's, uh, there's this one where they explored, they excavated, I think it was excavated, uh, a, a row along the River, Tame, the River Thames. And they're all the items that they discovered from there, they took out and put them into this massive display case. And she and I spent ages looking through these, through these drawers and opening up these cabinets and just looking at all of them. And the idea of that as artwork is amazing to me. And so you see, I can appreciate both sides of it. I, some of them I don't quite understand, but I want to learn. I want to understand these artworks. And more often than not, I will look at it and I will appreciate it and I will eventually understand it no matter how long it takes. I just, because of the way I was brought into art, and I think a lot of us are brought into art from a traditional standpoint and from a traditional art making way, which is where you draw a portrait or you draw a dog and then you slowly evolve it into more realistic artworks. And that's how my brain has always functioned with it until recently in which I want to explore more conceptual artwork and more contemporary art in which I've recently done as well more and more and I've done personal art projects that explore conceptual and contemporary art. But because I enjoy both sides of it, a lot of my artworks are inspired and take inspiration from classical pieces as well. So when people say classical art has no place within a contemporary and conceptual art world, I say bollocks to them. Because art is a part of our human nature and it is a part of our society. No matter what art it is, it does not matter from traditional paintings that were done thousands of years ago and cave paintings, yeah, let's take cave paintings, they're part of our culture too, to conceptual artworks of a potato in a display case. That's art as well. Please somebody tell me why. <laughs> but no, seriously, I enjoy all of them and it's, it's amazing to me. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on it, though, of if you sway more towards one side of the art world of being a traditional artist and enjoying traditional art, or swaying more to the other side a little bit of appreciating the more conceptual art pieces. Really, really interested, actually. So, yeah, please do let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Creative Flair podcast, and I hope you will join me again for the next one. Thank you very much for listening or watching and bye bye.